Abdullah, good morning. Good morning to you. Good to see you. Good to see you too. Uh-huh. Thank you for inviting me. Mhm. Uh-huh. Finally umefika Tako. Finally nimefika Tako na nimefika Nairobi after one year. <laughs> Corona imetufukuza bwana. Wao ndio sana gome ni watu wa reserve mpende town. Ai sisi watu wangamia bwana. Eh. Good to see you. Kai nangamia eh. Mhm. Habari ya Mandera? Mandera iko sawa. Mhm. Mapya? Ah uh, challenges hapa pale security kidogo. Mhm. But uh, we we are doing good. Okay. We are doing good. Mhm. Mm-hmm. Alright. So unajua watu wa juu ulianza hapa. Ulianza kama fund. Yeye anambia anga watu wajikaze wakiwa hapo wajikaze kwa sababu watafika pia hapa. Mhm. Kwanza kwanza wa follow, wasikize, wa share. Mhm. And then wa contribute. Uh-huh. Alafu tackle leta wa identify. Uh-huh. Alafu watakuja. Haya. Mm. Baza na shukuru sana kukuwa na bro. Ah uh, Mandera natumai ya kwamba mwanza kuingia uh, show mapema muone jamaa wenu mm. wa Mandera. Gaile ameingia and mm-hmm. Hassan Ado from Kwajia. Mm-hmm. Watakuja Muhammad Abdullah from Sielo. Mm-hmm. Watakuja. Waria wakisikia mm-hmm. watakuja. <laughs> Ari ya kesi kwa tafiki. Ari ya kesi kwa tafiki. Azawasikia ari ya ndadari fikeri vile mheshimiwa uh, Abdulai amesema. Haya tuambie mambo ya ya Mandera. Kuna nini pale? Mambo ya devolution how has it been? Well, uh, Mandera started devolution in 2013 uh, after the new constitution was promulgated and uh, before that we had a national government, central government for over 50 something years close to but uh, a lot has changed uh, mandera face has changed actually not this time uh, the entire just well we were the most marginalized co- under the first two presidents now that kenya ushered a new constitution in 2013 2010 and then devolution came in 2013 resources came now those resources uh, have made a lot of progress mandera wajia garisa isielo tarariva marsabit and even most of other asal counties um we've started managing our own affairs we have a county assembly in place we have a governor and you know a whole government so the resources have come and the question will be has is mandera better off today than it was in 2013 yes have the resources been you know managed prudently as required by the wish of the people there are a lot of criticism mm-hmm. but uh, today mandera has changed its face waje has changed its face garisa has changed its face uh, the hospitals have challenges but they have improved compared to 2012 uh, roads have been built students have gotten some scholarships people have been employed close to 3000 mm-hmm. so because of the challenges between the national government and the county government you will realize that uh, resources are being delayed in the national and that affects services in the county but otherwise uh, the first cesarean section has been conducted in takaba after the devolution uh, we have conducted one of the most serious i think uh, uh, surgery in mandera referral hospital of a woman who had a child inside her for 13 years that was done successfully by a surgeon dr abdaziz from mandera He did it in Mandera Referral Hospital. A child in the stomach for 13 years. For 13 years. How is that possible? Well, he he died and then he became a growth. Oh, okay. Then he he became a growth inside the mother. And because of the lifestyle and you know lack of literacy, high literacy, and lack of access to these facilities, people were not getting these services. Now the hospitals in the sub counties have challenges but compared to 2013 they are better off we have employed uh, nurses we have employed doctors we have employed uh, surgeons we have employed uh, specialists mandera has a gynecologist but there are challenges on what are the priorities for the people and what are the priorities for the county government but is mandera or northern better than 2013 absolutely yes so we're making a lot of progress yeah okay yeah So uh oh, when you talk about northeastern uh, it's I mean it's, it's it's a wider angle apart from uh, Mandera is just a county yeah. among the among, among the the Assal county the northeastern region 
And uh, okay, you, you're saying that there has been pretty some improvements in terms of uh, the development that has been happening in the country ever since. But the question is, do you, do you still feel, because there has been a conversation of resources, even as devolution comes in, we've been talking about there are no enough resources that have been developed from the national government. How has the feeling been? Is there a feeling of maybe the people from Northeastern have been delineated from, from the other parts of the country? Before, there has been a conversation. Be, uh, before, yes. Mm -hmm. Now, no. Um, after the 2013, it will be very inappropriate and wrong for people in northern Kenya to say that uh, they are being alienated when you're receiving 10 billion shillings. But the problem in the country is the challenges we have in northern Kenya. We are, ta Turkana is still the poorest county in Kenya. Mandera is the second poorest county in Kenya. Now, just bringing resources and, 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 and building roads or hospitals is not the only way to, you know, improve people's lives. Now, as a country, we have challenges of corruption. There is some elements of corruption, you know, devolved in most of the counties, and Northeastern is not, you know, any different. Now, on the issue of resource allocation between the counties and the national government, there has been a delay, either deliberately or by default, Resources are not coming to the counties in time. Now, in the last eight months, uh, people in Mandera have been getting their salaries, but through an overdraft between an agreement between the county government and the banks. So the national government must make sure that these resources have already been allocated through a legislative law. Now, if the money is there, then it's just upon those in the offices and through Treasury, they plan well and the money is released in time. But you know, our country, we play politics with people's lives. Mm. We play politics with resources. And that has effect on the people in the villages because as we speak, drugs are very short of, or in, in hospitals in northern Kenya. Because the government has said that uh, Kemsa has the monopoly of supplying drugs mm. to, to the country. Now... You can't just get money from um, Kemsa if you do not pay, and the money is huge. You know, you're talking of 70 million, you're talking of 90 million. So if you do not clear or, or with the previous balance, then it will be difficult for Kemsa to release another drug, patch of drug to the counties if you have not paid already, you know, your debt or, or areas you had. So it's upon the national government to make sure that they are not doing favor to anyone. The country belongs to Kenyans. The majority of people who pay this money are Kenyans. So those who are elected have been given powers through Article 1. They represent the people. They do not own Kenya or own the money. They work for Kenyans. So they must do their job diligently and honestly and release the money okay. to the counties. But the organs, the state organs or the institutions that are supposed to make sure that they follow issues of corruption issues of public funds embezzlement, issues of, of financial prudence, like the Office of the Auditor General, the Office, office of the, you know, uh, but control of budget, EACC, the National Intelligence, the Treasury, all these institutions must work together to make sure that the money that is meant for the people of Kenya, especially in those areas that have been marginalized for the last 50, 60 years, that is now catching up that money is used prudently and it doesn't go to the pockets of individuals. All right. Uh, even as you talk about the economy, there's also the issues because security also affects the economy in a big way. There's been the issue the other day, uh, there's a county vehicle that was found ferrying uh, guns. There's been an insecurity issue in the northeastern region for a very long time. And I would really want to wonder, is it that there are people who benefit from the politics, especially when you find a government vehicle bearing arms that are supposed to fund or actually to arm the militia? I mean, what's going on in North Eastern? Why do you guys keep fighting every time? What's, well, what's the problem? Well, we, we are fighting because people's, people have not gotten their social you know, life as they could be. There will be no peace if people are hungry. There are two things that people, governments always use to make sure that the citizens... Are, are not, you know, fighting the government, is to create fear and, and demoralize them. Now, when you see a government vehicle ferrying guns, that tells you that 
it tells you how rotten the system is. It tells you how weird Kenyans are. It tells you how indisciplined we are as a country. And we just pick, you know, whatever we like to eat, whether it's, you know, these are people who swore to protect the country. Now, in Northern Kenya, remember, in 1962, people in Northern Kenya never wanted to be part of this country. So it's through Kenyatta Senior that we were here. Now we are here. But the, the underlying issues that people are, are concerned about and, and the killings that happened in, in Malkamari, in Mandera, and, and, and uh, you know, Wagala Massacre, those people were not compensated. Those people were not, we just had the, the president apologize. So there are a lot of underlying issues between, uh, there is a difference between being part of Kenya and feeling being part of the system. So if the government is there just to harass people, I'm not saying every time, but Northeastern is suffering because of poor politics in Nairobi. Mm. If, if, if the president and his you know, executive were making sure that the policies they are bringing or, or trying to implement in Northern Kenya, they consult the locals. Because remember, we might be Kenyans, yes, but there is a difference between Northern Kenya and part of other Kenya. One, the people who inhabit there mostly are Muslims. Two, they are of Somali ethnic. The culture is different. The way even you talk to people is different. So when you bring someone from Kiambu to go and fight Al-Shabaab in Mandara, you are just killing that innocent man. He doesn't know. But the question is, why are you guys fighting? What, what's going on? Why? I mean, are you blaming the government well, for the fights that you have? in between No, no, no. You see, you see, people fight over resources. Okay. So Most, the issue is resources. It yeah, has nothing people to do fight that. over resources. When resources are scarce, then people will fight. M remember, most people in that part of the world are pastoralists. So, militia is a problem. So, the, if there is no enough water, which means the government did not, you know, drill balls or bring dams or, you know, for those animals, when the scarce, when the, when the resources are scarce, then people will fight. Mm. But, now, but now we have a county government. We have, like you said, devolution, the devolution is there. We have resources being trickled down to the people. There's a case where a, go a county government vehicle is found ferrying uh, ferrying guns. I mean, so how, how do you how do you push that to the government? Again? Well, you see, the government, we talk, Kenya is a unitary state with two tiers of government. There's the national government and the county government. Just because a county vehicle is ferrying guns, that is a failed in terms of policy. It has nothing to do with the locals. Because remember, greed, because you say the reason why people are fighting is because there are no dams, there are no balls. Why is the current government not doing that? Yes, you see, that part of the world has been marginalized for the last 50 years. You don't expect to have everything fixed in six years. It takes time mm. for you to fix most of these things. And if you look at 2012, up to now, there has been little fighting in Mandera than it was before 2012. Because right now the current government has drilled more than 100 boreholes. They have drilled dams. But you see, the population is growing. And the land is still the same. So what needs to happen is the failure of, of collaboration between the national government and the county government. Another thing is security is not devolved. It's a function of the national government. So you cannot just make policies and trickle them down to Mandera without consulting the locals. Public participation in everything in this country is part of the constitution. I mean, it is enshrined in the constitution that whatever you want to do, you consult the people. Mm -hmm. So... When the likes of Matiangi and Kibicho are making policies and they are not going to... Man I don't remember the president visiting Mandera in the last, you know, eight, seven years. And he has been going back to several other counties. What does that make me feel if the president is not coming to talk to us about our problems? So what needs to do is a collaboration between the locals who are Kenyans and the security operators and listen to them. You cannot think that you come from Kiambu or Kisi or Nyamira and you know Mandela. You don't. You talk to us who lived there, then we guide you. Right now, as the governor of Mandela said, 50% of roads are impassable because of Al-Shabaab. Why? Kenya is busy fighting Somalia. So, and internationally, it is not, you know, news for, to see government using proxies, either in militias or terror groups, to fight other government. Because instead of finding, how do someone attack 200 kilometers into Mandela County? 
How? Where did he come from? Another thing is Al Shabab is 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 kind of a ragtag militia that operates within the tens and twenties. Kenyans are using convoys of 15, 20 vehicles. How are you going to reach someone who is in the thick forest with a gun in the middle of nowhere with a bulletproof car? So the strategy is you train people from the pastoral communities. And I would like to tell the government, train people from the government, you know, pastoral communities. You know, we are not saying we are profiling. No, Kiambu and Mandera have not the same terrain. They don't have the same environment. They don't. So you need to have people who grew up in this part of the world, including the 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 the, the people from Northern Kenya, so that these guys can be fought. They are very, you know, they are not that organized. They just create fear, and when you create fear, you control people. So what the government needs to do is to sit with the people. And you remember Swale, the former uh, RC in Northern Kenya. He dealt with those guys, and those issues were done. He was just in, during Kibaki time, so these guys can be dealt with. They are very few. They are young men. Some of them are semi-literate. Some of them are very poor. Some of them have joined for ideology. Some of them have joined for different causes. But the issue of Al Shabab in Northern Kenya is because of the failed policy of the national government. Because right now the county government of Mandera has employed KPRs, you know, Kenya Police Reserves. Those are the guys who guide Mandera right now, and we have over. 3000 military rdu you know we have uh, special groups all of them but the people who make sure that mandera county is safe at night is kpr not the military the military are in their camp the police are in their camp and if they are doing patrolling they are doing major roads the guys who can fight these guys are either ex military somalis ex military jsu who will be employed by the government and then you register them guns they can fight them a somali can fight another somali And, and finish him within a day or two but the military's tactic is trained to combat you know external mm. forces these guys are, are 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 there within 30 or an hour and what is the response time of kenyan military or security it is like two hours three hours four hours four hours three hours someone with a motorbike they have already disappeared and then you don't know who where they have gone or where they have because for them to get even intelligence from local communities they intimidate the local community they kidnap them so the only way to make sure that northeastern is safe is to sit with the people and then listen to them and then that way the locals can help the locals can help. remember people think most of the guys who operate in mandera are only somalis they are not some of them are from viga some of them are the kamaus and the mosiokas and the kiproti because al shabab has stayed intact They're not employing Somalis anymore. They're employing other Muslims and other ethnic groups so that they can have their attacks. You remember in Kismayo the guy who was in the video was from coast but from Majengo here. So it has changed tack which means for those of us in the security and governance it is important the government also to listen to us. we write these things we write about Al Shabab every day. I know the threat they cause to my people. My own parents cannot go and you know see the animals because of fear. And the moment you make people fear you can control them you can manipulate them you can intimidate them you can kidnap them you can traffic them so what needs to do is the president must take the leadership and not leave it to people who are tenderpreneurs in the national government or the county government mm -hmm. and then save the people of northeastern from the jaws of al shabab so you feel the reason why we are struggling with insecurity in, uh, in northeastern kenya is because the government has failed in understanding its policy yes. shaping or, or no should fight the war yes. are you trying to say that our, our our military officers our security apparatus are not capable of 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 of, uh, of fighting these guys they are they are but they need to have a different training they do they need to have the boots on the ground they need to walk at night and day and collaborate with the locals and then they can reach where these guys are but if you're living in 200 kilometers away from an attack and the response hour is six hours six hours with a motorbike that guy has vanished to you know thin air you'll never see him so what needs to happen is you see when i'm wearing these shoes i know where it is sure when you come from a place you know better than anyone else what needs to happen kenya is trained for you know very big war yes you cannot be in 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 uh 
a bulletproof you know armored vehicle and expect to fight shabab these guys have left that war they are here in one hour they have disappeared they are guerrilla warfare they are guerrilla experts guerrilla experts mm-hmm. and then and then they using resources to make sure that they lure people to what they do i told you mandera is the second you know poorest county in kenya after tukana so when you give a young man 20000 30000 50000 to give you information that's how it works you give them information you pay them so it is upon the government to reach out to the youth to reach out to the local leaders to reach out to the communities we are not in 1962 when we had the referendum and we were you know advocating for cessation that is gone we are part of this country it's the second biggest part of this country so what we need to do is our military are capable of fighting al shabab yes what ta- the tactics are wrong. what tactics do we use okay you have a convoy of 40 vehicles these guys are 20 15 with rpgs sophisticated guns they burn the safari com mast they are gone you will never see them you uh-huh. never see them so there's something you mentioned you say that it's only somalis who can fight fellow somalis that's what you've said Partly yes. Yes, yes. And, yes. They, and you say that they're the ones who understand their tactics and they understand their terrains. Right? Why why I'm saying so, that? Uh, okay, I'm I'm getting there. Yeah. Now the thing is if the Somalis are the ones who can fight their fellow Somalis, the Somalis for uh, why are the Somalis from uh, Somalia fighting the Somalis in Mandera? I mean, what what motivates the war that is in Mandera by Al Shabaab? Yeah, you see now terrorism is an international thing. It is not a Mandera thing. If you look at the 196 countries almost 100 countries have active terror war including Nigeria Libya Sudan Egypt Philippines you know Pakistan Afghanistan terrorism has happened in Washington it has happened in London it is happening everywhere so it's a bigger war yeah with the bigger ideology and a big objective the somalis in somalia are fighting over power why did we fight in 207 human beings fight over resources they fight over power so the issue of saying that somalis can fight somalis what i mean is the locals if they are employed because we have a lot of ex forces military police jsu you know all 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 men in the intelligence committee we call all of them and then they provide leadership in the war against al shabab they can do that they can do that but what i'm saying is when you have 40 vehicles 30 vehicles caravans the response time in in these terror attacks is very important So by the time you 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 have a mast that was brought down by Al Shabab in 200 kilometers from Mandera town and the closest camp is maybe 60 kilometers by the time they are arranging themselves by the time you know they are getting orders from Nairobi to go and do this and that those guys are furnishing the tin air so what they also do is they are becoming unpredictable they are here today they are there tomorrow they are there the other day so you don't even find these are not people with camps they have their food they have their guns they move with them the only way to defeat them is to collaborate and work with the locals, with the locals mm. and then also bring on board the experts from the area all right so you could we probably if we could have more police reservists in the, in, in the northeastern region we could you know we could work with terrorism better we could we could cap it better yes now the question is why do they keep crossing over to kenya through mandera are they are they protesting the presence of kenyan army in in in, in somalia We talk in 2011 I was in Mogadishu working with an international organization. Al Shabab was in Somalia then. They were just like 10 kilometers from Mogadishu then. Now, when we went to Somalia in 2011, we did not listen to the international community in the African Union. Remember uh, the late Kofi Annan warned against having a neighbor with the ethnic group from the other side in that part of the world going to another country as peacekeepers they will be seen as people who occupy the country the history of somalia and kenya is very very sophisticated and complex from 1962 from the 70s because in 1962 the people of nova kenya never wanted to be part of this country but kenyatta senior agreed with you know the british that they should be part of we did there were a lot of atrocities that were done now why they came back is when strategically in these warfares when you attack me in the, your house i come back to your house that's how it works internationally you've seen in afghanistan they are fighting the po- you know the opium so that the drug don't, don't go to the us the afghans are using opium 
so that it goes to to us so whatever you do to me i'll also do it to you why they crossed is the kdf are now fighting under the au in somalia so al shabab is bringing war to us what are we doing in somalia i mean we bring that, war we bring you war that's how it is it it it's just like respect begets respect war begets war so what we need to do is several Kenyans and professionals and academicians have also said we do not need to have our soldiers in Somalia. We need to have a buffer zone within our borders to protect ourselves. Yes, 700 kilometers and we don't even have the capacity to patrol the border. We don't have cameras or barbed wires or what even What happened to the wall we are building in? Man? Well, we will ask the president <laughs> of Uhuru to tell us, the government of Uhuru can tell us. Ukuta <laughs> Eliana. Hi, that thing is just those guys I think they took the wire mesh and the the concrete stone. Kukunet. <laughs> Hi, my my dear. That wall was just you know, drama from the Jubilee government. It wasn't a wall. So there's no wall. There was a concrete uh you know foundation or what? No, no, the concrete poles with some wire mesh you know when you say a wall a wall is we know the wall in Israel and Palestine or the one between Mexico and the US but if you look at the, if, if you look at the, the pictures you will see that uh, there were just wire mesh and some concrete uh, poles and because of the disagreement between Somali government and, and the Kenyan government it didn't continue much al shabab has to make it more complex by and large we can de- protect our country if we have better policies and better prepared all right thank you so much for those insights uh abdullah on somalia but i would also wonder is that the same on thing mandera, that's on, on mandera, mandera. On, on sorry uh, yeah, we'll all right on, on on mandera and actually northeastern the northeastern frontier i would also wonder is that the same thing that is happening in capeto we've seen the uh, the military arms you know struggling to to repulse war in in in, in capeto and i would also flow that i'll also flash that across all right is that the same thing that you feel is happening in capeto because the, the security apparatus are being uh, disempowered Well, I think the pastoral communities uh, in the 29 uh, Asal counties have almost the same lifestyle. These are people who have, you know, huge animals, livestock, you know, cattle, goats, camel, maybe a bit of farming. Now, pro- protecting yourself is part of the cultural setup of any pastoral communities. There is a, a report by Geneva based uh, institution organization that said that uh, there are more guns in the civilian hand in Kenya than in the government hands. So we are talking of let's say the forces are around 200,000. We are talking of 750,000 guns in private citizen. So why are people fighting? One is the failure from the national government to realize that there are things you need to do on the ground. Corruption has you know crippled everything we do in life and those people are fighting because resources are scarce there has been a long culture that needs to you know the government to have policies against for a very long time so why do you think 50 police officers were killed in kabedo 200 kenyan or 150 you know military men were killed in 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 el ade it is because the government of the day is led by elites and and, and people who are just looking at it as a business venture and not as a service the government for the people by the people and you know that people talk about mm. so it goes down to the government if your citizens have guns and they're killing each other and they're killing the police then the people in the top are doing very wrong thing okay so that's that something that we having the problems we having in in uh, in, in Kapedo. uh mushandu i would like you to chime in kabla to janza i am not giving an opportunity to speak uh maybe you have some comments to make on the same thing on the issues of insecurity and uh there is a where apparently they closed down a teaching college because they were claiming the rockers who are in that college do not meet the necessary qualifications but you see we have had teachers from kiambu and nakuru move away from their citing insecurity leaving the kids of northern kenya without education so it is very simple and that is what we are saying you basically have to involve the rockers and as you have said we have so many ex kdf people that we are paying uh, and we can utilize their prowess to train these people so that we can get it is true i've lost a friend in northern kenya and uh, the response time was seven hours uh, that was in uh, moyale 
seven hours, uh, the, 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 the nearest people who can respond are in a seven hour drive, honestly. Seven hours drive, I will have moved from Mombasa, brought a vehicle in Nairobi and probably be on my way back. So therefore, that is something the government needs to address carefully and involve the rockers. If you do not involve the rockers, that is it. Why have we had Al-Shabaab attacks increase when we went to Somalia? It is that uh, Swahili saying, Swahili alisema nipe, nikupe. nikupe. That is what it is. Raisi amesema nipe, nikupe. Raisi amefanya, he is ruling with uh, something is called. <laughs> well, Rudy, Fanya fuli <laughs> Rudy, Rudy not this time. So, sileta mambea raisi ya nipe, nikupe. So, basically, I'm saying that uh, we need to address these issues. Um, If you look at uh, the money that is being given to county governments in northern Kenya, we also need to ensure that government, because this is a unitary state, it is not uh, a union, it is a unitary state. So we need to ensure that the money we give there is being used because today county governments do not have the function of security. And yet, if you go to Mandera today, the people with so many government vehicles more than the national government is the county government so can't we have the what we call it uh, the there is the, the the organization the intergovernmental relations or, uh, unit come together and discuss about cooperation between county governments and the national government to enhance security let's create a fund Within today we have what you call the police reservists. Why did we give the police reservist? Can't we have a certain wing like that in the Kenya Defence Forces that is training the rockers over there? Because we have to wake up to the fact that we now have a very polarized borderline up there that needs to be critically looked at. And it's only a fool who will just assume that uh, there is no problem. I saw the president. The other day with the Ethiopian Prime Minister opening a rink there. That road, it will become a road of death if we do not address the issues of security. And the President probably might not and may not have understood the polarized nature of that border because whenever the President is visiting, there is beefed up security, there is advanced teams coming. So he may not understand the nitty gritties of what happens when there is no dignitaries coming to Moyare. So today, we need to look at it, because we talk, we have a massacre going on right now in Ethiopia. So we are expecting that uh, even as we receive, because automatically being people who are uh, signed treaties to be hosting what we call refugees, we are expecting that one way or the other we will have refugees coming from Ethiopia when this thing escalates. It is not certain that it is only refugees who will receive. We will also receive people who want to come and do harm to our country, masquerading in that nature. So I think, as uh, he has every put, the government needs to be very deliberate on how to deal with the security, how to deal with a very polarized border in that part of our country. Uh-huh. That there is no other way around. There's no shortcut. No. Uh-huh. That's interesting. And also there seems to be war in the region, Djibouti, uh, uh, Djibouti Somalia and Kenya. Uh, Somalia blaming uh, Kenya of interfering uh, with the sovereignty of Somalia government. And there is a meeting that was done in uh, uh, Djibouti, the chairman is the chair of IGAD. And there was a report that was done by Higat that say that Somalia are being insincere. And now there's a war between Somalia and Djibouti. Djibouti. And it's flowing, overflowing to Kenya. So, it, I mean, you are going to see how the, that's going to turn up. Another problem, we talk when we invaded Ethiopia, na Somalia, one of the biggest business in the port of Mogadishu is Chaco. Yes. Taking Chaco to Yemen and other countries. It is being rumored that when we invaded there, we also occupied those businesses, which is uh, giving Kenya all these things, you see. Because the biggest, you cannot invade a country and take over the biggest port in the country and then invade the biggest business that that country has been doing. Whether it was being done by uh, uh, terrorist groups or what, 
your responsibility as a people who want to go and salvage the nation of Somalia it is to provide security not so to sell charcoal not not <laughs> go and sell charcoal <laughs> it is being rumored that uh, it is the business that uh, KDF took over when they went to Somalia and uh, whether it is true or not there is a saying that where there is smoke there is fire all right much me wa kimani kuri ya keke mwenye go to see you my brother good morning good morning mr chakwa i hope you doing well Very well, very well. Mm-hmm. Eh, yeah, <laughs> 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 Mandera. Mandera kuna ndege. Ai. Mandera Mandera, see you sir. Habari ya Tuamolo? Ndege iko 2 hours. Tuko hapo. Ah, watu wa Molo sasa mjajenga. Watu wa Molo mjajenga ya strip. Tutajika kama. Nasikia, nasikia kuna ya strip Uh-huh. and hopefully um, the national government gave for the first 200 million shillings uh, the county government has been very keen to ensuring that is completed and hopefully it's going to be completed soon enough uh-huh. and hopefully it's going to ease in um, uh, the time duration from nakuru to nairobi uh-huh. but also i know there is a, a, a loan uh, that was approved by treasury for that meant for the dueling of nakuru nairobi highway uh-huh. and hopefully all this will make sure that there is a smooth Uh, running between uh, ease of uh, ease of transport between uh, the great county mm. of nakuru and now to be the the fourth city in nairobi city ah mnataka kuwa city nakuru watu wa nakuru mtaka kujenga city mtaka kuwa city mtaka kuwa that that's a good by the way now that you mentioned the issue of dwale what could have been issue between uh, making an, an highway an expressway between mombasa to malaba than doing as here sorry What could have what could have made more economic sense doing an expressway from Mombasa to Malaba through Nakuru or doing the SGR that had disappeared somewhere in between um it's very difficult to give a yes or no answer to this because the SGR comes with advantages uh for example in terms of cargo i think really the SGR in terms of cargo movements from uh from 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 Mombasa all the way to Malaba the sgr is a deal as compared to an express highway uh, but again um, considering that r- multiple reports have shown that the cost of sgr was handed was so many times more than it should have been maybe it have been possible to do both other services <laughs> 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 all right <laughs> salimia this is your first time on the track uh, maybe salimia on attack class na watu wako modern na wameshuko na sema molo 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 kurezo imolo ziwa bimolo eh salimia watu wako Thank you very much my brother it's good to be here on the taco this is my very first time my name is Gurek Kimani member of parliament representing the great people of Molo and I look forward to a great debate mm. let us in, in, uh, engage candidly and honestly and uh, find solutions and uh, possible suggestions and recommendations to the various challenges that are affecting the great people of Molo and the great people of Kenya and I know Valentine's coming up soon mm-hmm. uh, president ametangaza kuna lockdown <laughs> Hata mimi nilikuwa nimeanza safari ya Malawi you know men conference ilikuwa Malawi so we read the traveling so they, they just want to tell them that we might not be available yeah we could locked up could locked up like anyway so this is where things are say the way they are fortunately or unfortunately abandi okay. tunatupa kama kombora ya kweli si uongo ya kweli so you're welcome to where we speak you speak your mind and you say things as they are i would want to also to comment on the issues that we that is kind of having on securities in northern kenya mm-hmm. and also the relationship between somalia and kenya and what is going on in between um one of the things that i have felt kenya needs to agree on is the relationship we have with our neighbors has been more or less them expecting us to give Uh, rather than being a mutual uh, relationship with our neighbors and uh, it's not just in somalia we uh, i think we have been very supportive of, of somalia including ensuring there's this ability there by sending linda into there by sending our our, our our security agents there and i know there has been accusations that maybe whatever they were doing like selling makai and things like that may not be uh, what they were meant to be doing there uh, but that's just something so uh, um, so minor as compared to the real mission the real mission was to have a stable somalia and i think kenya has really succeeded in in terms of doing that but uh, i think it came to a time where now they want us to exit um, but i think the government of kenya was not ready to exit at that time that led to uh, the very embarrassing diplomatic uh, row that uh, even uh, so the somalia um, president recall the ambassador from from Kenya and uh, late last year that is in December but i think Kenya needs to be firm 
And not just Somalia. I remember last, I think two or three years ago, we had um, our, um, our goods being burnt in Tanzania. Um, but then what do we do? I think we just kept quiet about it. Um, the price of eggs in this country has really gone down mm. and it's being blamed on the influx of goods from, uh, from, from Uganda, mm. uh, including even milk. Mm. So I think Kenya needs to define the relationship she has with her neighbors mm. and stamp authority and say, we are only going to engage with you when this relationship is mutual, mutually benefiting. Otherwise, we will be very supportive of these countries and once they get just a chance to hit a task back, then they actually do that. And on the issue about guns and violence and, and, uh, and cattle wrestling and all that, um, my friends here put it very clearly that we need local solutions. Mm. And some of the times we want to, to export uh, or to bring Nairobi solutions to problems that uh, that you want to take a solution from Nairobi to people and deliver the the, the solution in English to people that don't even understand Swahili. Mm. So, <laughs> <laughs> really, what are we doing? <laughs> there is need for this to come from the bottom up approach. Let the solutions come from the people. Why are they fighting? Uh, because fighting is not good. War is not good. So, the, 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 we need to find local. Uh, solutions being solved by local people, mm. but this ex uh, exporting Nairobi solutions and going there in suits and speaking out of English and and diplomatic words to these people it may not make sense. The solutions need to come from them. Kengeza mingi na katwa kwenye alisema. Kengeza mingi na katwa. Kengeza mingi na katwa. So I think I don't know if you have any comments, Abdullah, because yeah. before we move away from the Mandela topic. Yeah, the, no, the issue of Kenya mm. uh, dealing with the neighbors. Is the problem our neighbors or ourselves? This is a country that is very corrupt. The president said we lose two billions. When a society has no ideals, and the only ideal it has is money, why do you think Ethiopians will still come? Because they will pay money. Somalis will still come because they will pay dollars. Ugandans will still bring goods because the guys at the border are corrupt. The guys in the... So it is systemic failure of Kenyan systems that... The foundation that we got this country in in the first place, we did not have a modern. We did not. We did, we did not aspire to build a modern state. A modern state is a state where people have equal rights, people have equal opportunities, people have, you know, res equal respect. But today, let's say, uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta wants to visit Parliament. Have you seen what happens in those roads? Yeah, go to Amsterdam and see how the Prime Minister does his work. He goes to the three Prime Ministers of Norway, uh, Holland and da Denmark were meeting. They all came with bicycles. That's a modern state. <laughs> he can't even walk. <laughs> what was Uhuru before he became a president or a prime minister in P? He was a son of a president. Not so only son of course a he, has not he was a bank teller in the CBD. He just grew in the rank. There is nothing special being a president. There is nothing special about being an MP. There is nothing special being a leader. You are supposed to serve your people. Okay? Mm -hmm. you, are, you know, why do you need 20 caravans of vehicles to go to state house, from state house to parliament? Which means the system you're leading has a problem. You're fearing your people. I haven't seen Uru, you know, greeting people in the CBD with three, four soldiers guarding him, maybe maybe from a rogue guy like in Kilifi, the guy who attacked Raila, we don't want such people to happen to the president. So we need some security, some form of security, yes. But if the president cannot just abruptly visit Nyaya House and greet his people and tell them, you know what, how is the situation here? That is leadership. But when you're coming with all these, you know, vehicles, what are you telling us? You're telling us that I am the guy, I am very big, Kibaki was a president. Kenya was thriving. We had a very humble guy. And we used to laugh. So, when you're... My Mwishmua is a member of parliament, yes. When was that parliament opened? From 1963. There are men who passed that parliament and left. Where are they today? It is what you leave for your country that matters most. It's not who you are. You know... In November last year, I traveled to Holland. When you leave Chipotle Airport, you take a train. You just use your visa card from Kenya. From about 90 kilometers of a train, you use like 7 euros. You are light, you take another train. And you don't see a police officer there with guns. 
You go to the airport, the guy asks you, why are you in this country? You know why? They took care of the problem that could have brought violence. There are no prisoners in Amsterdam. The jails in Holland are empty. Why? Everybody was given a house. Everybody was given a card. You know, it's literally a crime, a crime to feel hunger in those streets. You get a food food bank, you go to a supermarket, you get food. You know, if for you free. Are, for free because the government is utilizing the taxes very well. Your work is to pay tax and follow the law. Kazim Billy Pagake. You pay the tax and you follow the law. The rest is for the government. What do they do? The school is free. The health is free. We can do it. Ghana did it. South Africa did it. Rwanda is doing it. But because you are Kenya and we value cars and houses, those things don't bring ideas and values to people. It is how we live as a community. It is the heart that matters. Look at what's happening in the political arena. So for you even to say we are going to have good relationship with our neighbors before you even reach there, let us look at our 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 our, our fundamental fundamentals. J.M. J.M. Kariuki died because he said Kenya is a country that has 10 billionaires and 10 million beggars. He died for it. How was his constituency when he was there? They had taps of water and everything was good. One guy, he was a Kikuyu. So people died for this country because they wanted better. But the deep state and what is happening currently in the country, we will not prosper as long as the president is telling us that I don't know what to do in status because people are corrupt. Two billion is stolen because I don't know what to do. Murade is telling us that building has its share of corrupt cartels. Embarrassing. A whole cabinet secretary. What do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? What do we do now? Do we go home and cry and expect yes, Jesus to come back? <laughs> you have instruments right. of power. All right. Yes. <laughs> we should do maybe you wind up on that discussion on insecurity in the, in the northern frontier and as well the relationship between Kenya and its neighbors. I, I think I think that <laughs> is... <laughs> so I but, but, but I think as he, he has again put it so well that uh, the heavy presence of police even in our churches yeah. You know, our mosque will tell you how much you fear each other in this nation. Yes. That uh, you cannot move around uh, because you fear the president. You saw the other day when the president was in Sagana and he was visiting uh, a market at Chaka. There were a line of security officers, like 20 of is them, central Kenya? keeping, and it is central Kenya, Simandera. keeping six or seven meters away from the president. He's addressing them. He cannot even look in the face of the people who are near him because the security is blocking them. Because the president fears his own people. What are they going to do to him? Lakini kuna mtu hapa amesema mmedanganya. James Mwenda amesema tuambie kwamba rais anaendanga CBD usiku. Sa unajua sasa unajua usiku unajua yeye yako kwa private anajenga nchi usiku. Anajenga nchi usiku anyway. The point here is because we do not to I have seen him go to the CBD to check on what Nairobi Metropolitan Service is doing which is actually degrading the work of a uh, president because inspecting those projects in Nairobi is not even the work of body but you ought to stay in the office and give the musha to, musha to we are Aye. talking about insecurity mm-hmm. and we are saying yes now bitoku leo situ harakisha bana tupeleke pole pole we we are, we are, we are simply saying that the way we handle our internal security at foremost will determine how we handle our international security if you look at today we are spending can if, if uh, go to your place in moral where the town you live you realize that banks are getting more security than the local monanchi we pay police officers to take care of the common monanchi but that officer ends up being posted to take care of a bank so that he can be paid 2000 shillings at the end of the day this is very embarrassing the ratio of a police officer to a local monanchi it is so dilapidated that the ratio of a police officer to a bank is so amazing. These are some of the things we need to look at. That how we address the issues of security ourselves 
And it starts not even from the government, from where we live. How do you live with your neighbor? How do you live with your neighbor? The, the other day, I visited uh, a certain place not far from where I live. And uh, the guy who opened the gate for me uh, forgot to cross that small gate in the main gate. And that got him fired. Because he forgot to open. Why? What does that tell you? That you live in a society where you don't even want your next door neighbor to know what is it that you do. And I think starting from there at a very low level of security that is with your neighbor, we have escalated the same animosity we feel each, with each other at home. And we are the same people who will come and be in government. And there is no difference. You cannot operate security any different than you operate it in your house. So if your house is a no-go zone, and you're given a job by government to come and take care of security, you are still going to implement the same way you implement at home. So I think security, you know, in Anzanga Mimi, security starts with you. Mambo ya SRC, they have approved the uh, car grant for MCS yesterday. And the official not said it's a loan. It's not a grant. It's not a loan anymore. It's a grant. How does that make you feel at a time when we have not been paying doctors during a pandemic? 